item 18 are oral questions which will be conducted in accordance uh, with the guidelines set out in Annex A to the Council Procedure Rules. And the first speaker is David Jenkins, who is not present. Paul Sales. Hey. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'll, I might struggle here uh, with the names and the titles, um, but I would like to ask a question for whoever it is responsible for, uh, whichever member is responsible for the... Um, where are we? Cabinet Member for Adult Services, Councillor Hutton. And my question is quite simply this. It, it relates to Kingswood House. Um, could you confirm for me, please, that the withdrawal of the County Council block contract from Kingswood Park residential home is a major factor in that home's closure. Thank you very much and welcome, Councillor Sales. Um, whilst I appreciate I've been um, in the post but a, a short while, it is my understanding that the decision uh, to remove the block contract from MHA um, in October of this year influence their decision to close the home in the con con uh, conjunction with sanctuary. Thank you. Can Fine I come me. back on that, please, uh, Chair? Fine. Can I ask you then, um, I note your reply, and thank you for that. Um, do you consider that the repeated zero rating uplifts to the block contract over many years has contributed to the closure of Kingswood Park and caused financial hardship to the recipients of the grant elsewhere? I don't have full understanding of the way their finances operate. I will get back to you with a fuller answer once I've had a chance to discuss it. Thank you very much. Sue Geimer, Councillor Geimer. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, mine is about civil parking um, in South Cambridgeshire, and it's a request from our parish council uh, that met last night that whereas maybe elsewhere revenue gathering may be the reason for parking enforcement. What we really want in our villages is people parking in appropriate places and can please we make that distinction when we go through the process that people want people to park properly not necessarily that tickets are being issued and at present we feel the police are very good in dealing and targeting these things through our local neighbourhood panels and we wouldn't wish to um, forget that. I've got no idea who I'm supposed to be addressing this to because oh, <laughs> thank you, <laughs> I can't read which, one, which bit of paper it is ok, bye Yes, Councillor Criswell Yes, that, that is the intention, Councillor Geimer, and I'll certainly reinforce that, but uh, it's not, not intended to raise revenue, it's intended to actually uh, help parking situations. Thank you. Do you have a supplementary? Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Nessinger, please. Um, my question is to Councillor Criswell also. Um, last summer, following a catalogue of errors by this council running back to su summer 2009, the surface dressing of Grange Road left the cycle path in a dangerous and disgraceful mess with half of the cycle path surfaced and the other half at a lower level and full of gravel. Last autumn, the Cabinet member and senior officers gave assurance, and I think um, Councillor Maguire will be able to confirm this, um, that the fault had been accepted by the Council's contractor and that the issue would be resolved when the weather was suitable. The weather has now been ideal for over a month, but despite several requests, I've had no date for when the work will be done. Uh, the exam, exam period in the university is now almost upon us and for hundreds of students who live upon the road um, that is a very bad time for any work to be done on that road which means that the council has missed the chance to rectify that um, fault in the spring please could Councillor Criswell give me an assurance that the, the error will be rectified um, as soon as possible in the early part of the summer but not during the university exam period Councillor Criswell Thank you. I can give Councillor Nessinger the assurance that I will look into it, but of course I'm not familiar, so I, I can't uh, uh, say further than that, Chairman, but I will uh, make inquiries as a matter of urgency. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any supplementary? Only to say, please, could I have a reply within a week or so? No response needed. Thank you very much indeed. Councillor Brooks-Gordon. 
Thank you, Chair. Um, question for Councillor Clark. By which mo voting method was he uh, voted? Elected. Councillor Clark. Uh, I can answer that um, by saying, first of all, it's a private matter for our group, as it is for your group. Uh, but I had the most votes at the end, so that's all that matters. Thank you. Do you have a supplementary? And would he say this is a better method than any other? <laughs> I, I can confirm that all elections that get me elected are good methods. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor Whelan. Thank you. Um, I was going to ask a question of Councillor Harty, but as everybody else is, is asking questions of Councillor Criswell, I thought I'd join in as well. Um, we've heard a lot about localism this afternoon, and at the next council meeting, cabinet meeting, sorry, next week, we're going to be discussing uh, speed changes on various highways throughout the county. My question is, how does localism relate to villages? Is it based on what people want? or is it based on their ability to pay for things? And the reason that I ask this question is that South Cam's Area Joint Committee spent a lot of time listening to the residents of Barton and Grantchester, myself as the local county councillor and Francis Burkett as the district councillor, looking at ways that the A603 could have speed reduction implemented so that it would make it safer for children to cross the road and get to the school. Everybody was in agreement. In fact, two of the former cabinet members agreed, I think it was Councillor Reynolds and Councillor Audrey, were happy to see localism at work. But as I look at the papers for the cabinet next week, it appears that all of those recommendations have been completely ignored. And the recommendation is that the parishes of Grantchester and Barton will be approached to see if they're happy to pay for the speed reductions. Councillor Criswell. Chairman, I, I need to familiarise myself further before the Cabinet meeting next week and I will have a fuller answer for Councillor Whe Whelan before then. Thank you. Do you have a supplementary? I do. That relates into, in particular to particular villages, Barton and Grantchester, but I come back again to what does localism mean? Does it mean listening to what local people want or does it depend on the ability, their ability to pay? I represent some villages which have thousands of people living in them I represent Maddingley, which has just a few, and I represent Childerley, which has 12 houses. If it's only the ability of a, of a parish to pay for something that's going to see it implemented, it's going to be very difficult throughout the whole of the county because we have very different areas. Councillor Criswell. Thank you, Chairman. The, the only comment I would make is, of course, our intention is to concentrate our resources, our limited resources, on where we can do the most good for the people of Cambridgeshire. Um, and safety and uh, local aspiration will obviously feed into that. But if something is a local priority uh, and local uh, councils and communities are prepared to contribute to something or, or pay for a lower speed restriction, obviously that works in our interest and their interest as well, Chairman. That is localism. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Pillow. I'm not sure who this question is best aimed at. Um, so I'll, I'll aim it at Councillor Clark. <laughs> Can you please provide me with details of any um, fines associated with the software licensing paid by this council, including the companies involved, the amounts and the dates? I don't expect you to know it off the top of your head. <laughs> um, additionally, can you please provide me with information on the processes that this council has in place that ensure the county council is not in breach of its software licensing? Councillor Clark. Uh, thank you. Yes, I don't have the information available. We'll certainly get back to you on that one. Thanks. Thank you. Do you have a supplementary? Yes, I do. Um, first of all, I appreciate that you don't have it, as I hadn't given you notice, unfortunately. Um, um, but would you agree with me that, that, that software used by the County Council should be fully paid and correctly licensed? Um, I can speak with some authority on this, I guess, having owned IT companies. Uh, and yes, of course, software should always be paid for. Um, in fact, if we, if we don't pay for A, we're breaking the law. But secondly... Uh, the greater good uh, is not being served because unless revenue comes into the companies, they can't reinvest to produce more software that we want. So both from a criminal aspect but also for the better will, it needs to be done. Councillor Graham Wilson. Uh, thank you, Chair. This is for the Cabinet Member for Learning. In Gone Manchester, there are nine children who will be starting school for the first time in September. And all of these... Are 
who have been allocated places in Huntingdon. There are others who live in Gomrenster who have been allocated places in Gomrenster, but there are nine who have been allocated places outside of Gomrenster. I understand from officers that I spoke to this morning and from the head at Gomrenster Primary that additional places could be provided at the two schools in Gomrenster. So the question for the Cabinet member is can he assure me that the funding will be provided to allow those pupils who want to be educated in Godmanchester to be educated in Godmanchester this coming year. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Harty. Thank you very much, Councillor Wilson. Um, as I spoke to you this morning and did, uh, I'll repeat again, uh, six of the children have already been, it has been agreed for, to take them. Uh, there are three that are outstanding and we're looking at that and I should have some information in the next couple of days for you. Do you have a supplementary? Yes, please. This year has caused a lot of consternation for parents in Godmanchester. Can you assure me that we'll do it right next time, that we'll have a strategic review? Godmanchester is growing. There's houses being built at the moment, and there's another 800 planned for a few years' time. Can you undertake a strategic review, including me and the Town Council, to ensure that places are provided in Godmanchester for Godmanchester's residents? Thank you. I'm happy to take that back and, uh, and with the admissions uh, manager have a look at that and come back to you. Councillor Manning. Thank you, Chair. Uh, this is a question for Councillor Clark. Um, on the back of your sort of talking about making the council and specifically this meeting run more efficiently, uh, you're being a businessman, which you've all mentioned today several times, um, I presume you would never make a sort of structural change without having some way of measuring the effectiveness of that structural change. So could you perhaps talk a little bit about how, what targets you've got for measuring the effectiveness of this council, given the changes you've made to the Constitution? Councillor Clark. Uh, thank you. Um, well, one of the obvious measures will be um, a, a stopping of repetition. So I'm guessing that uh, if we don't have information items uh, coming forward to this full council because they've already been dealt with through the overview and scrutiny process into cabinet that our papers will be a lot thinner and therefore those suffering from ailments including my broken ankle it will be much easier for us so that's one measure um, I would also like to think that this council could see how long we spend within this chamber here back down to national norms um, one thing I want to do my research it's very obvious that, that we extend a number of hours longer than most similar councils. And that is largely to do with the discussions and debates that take place about the information only items. Councillor Manning, do you have a supplementary? Um, by your use of the phrase, I'm guessing, I think the answer to my question was actually no, you haven't got any targets. So would you be willing to either now or take away and come back to council with some actual specific targets so we can actually that we have a way of maybe in a year's time measuring whether, you're, whether you've actually achieved those targets or not. Councillor Clark. Uh, I'm always happy to, to look at these things and happy to engage with members who have an interest in it. Thank you. Councillor Kindersley. Uh, thank you, um, Chairman. This is a question for Councillor Harty. Um, uh, Council will know that Gamlingay Village College has been placed in special measures following one of the worst Ofsted reports Cambridgeshire has ever seen, and indeed it lies in the bottom 5% of English and Welsh schools. There is a very widespread perception, and I do um, highlight the word perception, within the community that Gamlingay Village College has been allowed to fall into such a state of failure by the County Council so that the county can achieve its long-held ambition to close the last remaining middle school in Cambridgeshire. What steps will Councillor Harty take to reassure and, more importantly, convince the community that this is not the county's ambition and not the reason that the County Council's preferred option for Gamlingay Village College currently is that of closure? Mr Harty. Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman, and thank you, Councillor Kindersley. Um, the consultation uh, continues... Um, and will close on the 25th of May. It has never been the intention of the County Council just to simply close the village college. There are a series of options, as, as you're aware, that uh, 
that have been offered. Um, we have, through the various meetings that have been held with the school itself, uh, in terms of governors, staff and parents, um, had the opportunity, or given them the opportunity, to respond and put forward their views. And that's meetings that have been held at both the first school and the middle school. Um, I, I, we, will, we have continued to receive letters, uh, as you, again, will know, and uh, uh, those letters and emails uh, will finally be pulled together uh, as a document which will go to Cabinet uh, sometime in June. And I don't wish to prejudge the decision that will be taken. Uh, there is a strong community involvement in the discussions that have taken place, but I would just stress to you that there is no um, decision taken, uh, there, there is, there's no prejudgment at all. And until we have all the facts back and all the um, uh, views back from all the parents, uh, then we'll start to look carefully at the uh, points that are made. Councillor Kinsley, do you have a supplementary? I do, thank you. Um, thank you, uh, through you, Chairman. May I thank Councillor Harsey for his uh, full, very full response. Uh, and perhaps I could ask him to convey um, the thanks of the community to both himself for coming to a number of public meetings and also colleagues within the, in the uh, department who have put a great deal of time and effort, uh, more or less appreciated, obviously depending on what your preferred option is, more or less appreciated um, widely within the community. Yes, thank you, Councillor Hart. Can, can I just come back and uh, just thank him for the comments made because we were, at, we were both at two meetings where um, there were some very strong views aired at that meeting and certainly aimed at the officers and I think that's regrettable um, but I do appreciate your appreciation of the efforts that were made by the officers during that period. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Councillor Burke. Thank you, Chair. Um, my question is for Councillor Criswell. Um, highways is uh, your responsibility, is that right? That's not my question, but just to check. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, a couple of years ago, this council uh, committed to resurfacing Mill Road, uh, which is in my ward and also in Councillor Harrison's, actually. <laughs> and the entire section of Mill Road in Councillor Harrison's ward was completely resurfaced. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know, bias, <laughs> what, what can I say? Um, and the section of the road uh, in my ward was patched. Uh, <laughs> 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 but but, but no, not just small-scale patching, uh, an awful lot of it were, was patched. Um, since then, the patched areas have started to begin to disintegrate. I'm aware that there's a lot of money, being additional money, being made available this year for roads, and I've spoken to highways officers who tell me that my side of the bridge is going to be patched again. Um, and it, it seems to me that this approach gets to the bottom of what's wrong um, with, with highways and road maintenance, that we're paying to patch 50% of, of this road it's extremely expensive. I'm not talking about potholes. It's 50-meter uh, stretches of it. Paying to do the same work twice in a two-year period. So would Councillor Criswell please commit to sitting down with officers and me and looking long and hard at the, the, the sense of that? Thank you. Councillor Criswell? Sir, certainly happy to discuss that with officers and get back to you, Councillor Burke. Yes. Thank you. Do we have a supplementary briefly? Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Simon King, please. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr Chairman. My question is for Councillor Harty. Um, this is a, a matter of grave concern to the people of Wisbeach and the surrounding area. Um, it's recently become public knowledge that the Isle College in Wisbeach is proposing to move the musical theatre and business and computing courses from the Isle College in Wisbeach to the College of West Anglia in Kings Lynn, of which the Isle College is part. I'm concerned on two accounts. First of all, I understand that the money for the College of West Anglia now is channeled through the County Council, and also 
we have agreed to put a substantial amount of money towards the rebuild of the Isle College in Wisbeach. And my question follows on from that funding issue. And the first question is, were we consulted about this change? And if we weren't, can we make known in the strongest possible terms our grave concerns about this? Because this is not partnership working if we weren't consulted. And I would like the Cabinet member to make the strongest possible representations, furthermore, that this change doesn't go ahead. It's out to consultation at the moment. I have been inundated with protests because it will have a devastating effect on employment in Wisbech. To give you an example, uh, if you'll bear with me, Mr Chairman, out of 55 vacancies in the Wisbech Job Centre, no less than 10 of those required this very computing skill that is proposed to be transferred over to Kings Lynn. Now, in geographic terms, it's not very far, but those of us who come from Wisbech know that we're an area of low educational attainment and also people are very reluctant to could make you, that journey. Could, could you wind so, up, please? Mr Chairman, thank you for your indulgence. Can I have a reassurance from the camp member, please? Councillor Harty. Looking. Um, I'm not familiar with the, the, the detail on, on, this, on this particular issue and what I'd like to do is talk to you perhaps after the meeting and certainly we'll take that up further. Do you have a supplementary, Councillor King? A very brief, shorter one. Thank um, you. <laughs> if, if perhaps uh, Councillor Harty could speak to me tomorrow because I, I won't be available. But um, thank you for your uh, answer and I look forward to influencing the college. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Downs. Thank you, Chairman. My question is for Councillor Harty, as you would expect. Um, we've heard many, many times in this chamber how badly schools in Cambridgeshire are funded, uh, and there's a whole lot of reasons why that is the case. The present government is now carrying out a consultation on school funding reform, um, and uh, this is the rationale and principle. So my questions are, um, have we, as I say, have you uh, responded to this consultation? You have until May the 25th to do so. Um, if you have, could you just give everybody the broad outline of the, of the main points that you've made? And if you want any help, I'm happy to help you. Councillor Harty. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Downs. Um, it, it's useful to have knowledge of the question coming, even though it was over lunch. Um, Councillor uh, Curtis will actually give you a, a complete response on this particular issue. Yeah, sorry, I haven't heard about complete response. Just that one of my final acts as lead member after one of our PDG meetings was actually to write to Michael Gove to make the point about Cambridgeshire schools funding and the need for Cambridgeshire schools to get a better deal. If you want, I'll make sure you get a copy of that letter and what went to him. Do you have a supplementary, Councillor Downs? Yes, thank you. Um, that's quite, quite a good point to make, and I entirely agree. The key issue is will the new government allow local authorities to have some final say in the way money is distributed among schools within the local authority. That is, from our point of view, I think the key issue. And I, did you make that point to Michael Gove or did you not? Well, that's an opportunity missed and, and I think that's something we ought to follow up. Councillor Harty. Can I, can I just um, also then respond and suggest that it would be useful to have a meeting, Councillor Downs, perhaps with the Executive Director, just to bring some of these issues together uh, and we can take some fur further opportunity to respond. In the spirit of what Councillor Clark said earlier on, I'm very happy to do so. Thank you very much. Councillor Stone. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'm afraid I don't know whether I should be addressing this to the Cabinet Member for Community Engagement, the Cabinet Member for Growth and Planning, the Cabinet Member for Community Infrastructure, or the Cabinet Member for Resources and Performance. Therefore, I shall address it to the Leader of the Council, if he doesn't mind, uh, with the expectation that he will pass it on to uh, whoever should. Now, in this year's uh, integrated plan, we had an income item from the New Homes Bonus, that income item in the new homes bonus was marked TBA. So the 
budget balanced without that income from the new homes bonus. I am told that the amount that the, this authority will be getting from its late amount grant, that is the new home bonus, is £789,300. And that in the June Cabinet meeting, the Cabinet will decide what to do with that money. Meanwhile, uh, the Housing Minister has said this funding from government is only the start of the process. It is now essential that councils engage with their local communities to decide how the money is spent so residents feel the direct benefit of growth rather than extra pressures on local services. Could I ask whoever to outline how that uh, consultation is to take place? Councillor Clark. Yeah, thanks, Councillor Stone. Uh, we will certainly look into that and we'll get back to you with a written answer. Do you have a supplementary, Councillor Stone? Only that I do expect that consultation will take place. Thank you very much indeed. I beg the leave of the Council that Councillor Harrison has asked that I exercise discretion to allow her to ask a question. Uh, I'm always influenced by Councillor Harrison, so per <laughs> perha perhaps, perhaps I can seek the indulgence of the Council to allow Councillor Harrison to ask her question. It sounds so glamorous and mysterious, doesn't it? It's just that actually I had read my new constitution and I noticed that the new, under the new rules there was no requirement to fill in a slip, so I duly didn't fill in a slip. But now I'm told that the new constitution doesn't come until next time, so my um, mayor culpa and all that. But actually, if I may, I would like to ask the leader a, a question. Um, he's made some big claims including today, actually, about the benefits of abolishing the Council's £3 million annual bus uh, subsidy budget and replacing it with a short-term budget, one-fifteenth the size, to be spent on innovative solutions. Could he tell me by what date he expects the people of Cambridgeshire uh, to be able to enjoy standards of bus services to return to pre-April 2011 standards? Thank you. Councillor Clark. Uh, thank you. Well, I have no intention of returning um, the bus standards to pre-IPP days. We want to see them better than that. Um, the bus subsidy, as you know, is a, is a blunt instrument, and we've talked about empty buses running around the countryside. We've already announced uh, our ambition to set up a community <coughs> transport, and we are exploring a number of options, building on the work that Councillor Maguire has done already with community transport, uh, and we have some ambitions to perhaps uh, look at uh, a franchise system whereby a number of micro-businesses could be set up uh, around Cambridgeshire to fill the voids that are developing. And that's not just about the 2.7 million um, uh, subsidy, because we have to remember that, that this county spends around about £24 million pounds a year on transport, if you take into account moving school children uh, and those adult social care needs and all the rest of it. And we think we can use that money smarter, better, for reasons uh, that will benefit local people in local areas. Uh, to answer the time scale, I'm hoping to have a pathfinder or a project up by the end of this year. Thank you. Do you have a supplementary, Councillor Harris? Well, I do, because I think the leader of the council has dug himself into an awful hole on this matter, because by trying to, you know, the at attack is the best form of defence method of operation, he's claiming, you know, and he's now digging himself further into it, it's going to be even better than it was before. But actually, I would like to ask him whether he understands how unbelievably maddening that is for people who currently cannot get a bus to their work, to the doctor, to school and so on. And I suppose as a first, does he understand how maddening that is? Um, because does he understand the need of people for public transport services in, in this country? Absolutely, Clark. Uh, I totally understand that and, and I've got um, uh, children of my own and one who's recently decided that um, he's not going to take up an offer of employment because getting to work on buses at the moment is just too difficult. So I do fully understand the problem. Uh, can we solve it overnight? Probably not. Have we the ambition to solve it? Yes, we have. And it's not all about cuts. This is about investing in a different way of providing public services. But I, but I do believe in it, yes. Thank you very much. That concludes the oral questions under item 18. We move to item 9.